go. Hello, welcome to the latest episode of Writers Talk, a series in which I talk to writers about, well, writing. Today's guest is the one and only Joe Lidster from London in Moma. Aren't you still in London? Yes, yes. Still in London. Yeah, yep, Joe is, of course, I'm sure well known to most of you as some of you has written everything. <laughs> I mean, I'm not joking. You've written what? Audio? Stage plays? Uh, prose? Uh, TV? Comics? Uh, I've done a sort of interactive web comic. Oh, it's a comic. It's a comic. Um, yeah. You know. Helping Henry Tizard choose what weapons to take over to America to get them to join in the war. That was fun. That was a good job. That's different. Um, cool. All right, let's talk about some of your writing. But since it's obviously Pride Month and this is going to be going up on Saturday, you have a fairly unique experience, I should say, where you started writing professionally long before you came out. Mm -hmm. And of course, I've continued to do so since. In your own words, I mean, I don't want to put words in your mouth. Has there been any noticeable difference to you in the, your, the way you're received or how you approach things? Um, not really. Uh, I, I think writing, you know, and I think you know, I did most of my professional work, I suppose, is children's TV, you know, and we always sort of joke on children's TV that occasionally we'll have a, a token straight male, straight male, male writer. Um, yeah, no, I don't think it's, I think it's possibly made a difference in my writing. Um, I suppose, you know, when I, by coming out, I got more, you know, became more self-confident. Mm -hmm. So I suppose it's, it's changed elements of my writing. Um, but no, I don't think it's necessarily made a huge difference. Uh, you know, I would like, you know, I try to put representation in where I can, because I think it's important. I know it really helps me and my family. Um, and it's what I didn't have when I was growing up. Uh, so yeah, no, I do try to do that. Um, but at the same time, a lot of my writing isn't uh, my own thing. Yeah. So it's I can't suddenly make a character gay if they're not gay, you know? Yeah. Um, and to be fair, with most kids' TV, um, kids don't want kissing of any sort. They want adventures. So yeah, we yeah. don't we don't to dwell on it. Um. I don't think we've actually ever discussed your entire coming out anyway, because obviously <laughs> I knew you a lot. Well, I've known you. Yeah. I think about at least 17 years, mm. which is crazy. Okay. Yeah. True. yeah. <laughs> old, we were yeah. obviously a lot younger then. Right. Um, you certainly were. Uh, and oh God, I can't remember. I'm, it's, how long ago since you came out? So I came out, um, well, I mean, gradually, as I think a lot of people do. Yeah. So it was almost over a period of time. Uh, so I think it was not long. Uh, oh, crikey, it came up recently because <laughs> I came out to my family uh, at the wake of my granddad's funeral. Um, or to the first time of my family. <laughs> um, uh, that did come up as being... I think I, uh, I want to say about 2008, okay, 2009. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I think I was in my, uh, I think I was around 30. I was around, yeah, around 30. How old are you now? Uh, 45, 44, no, 44, still 44. Blimey. But I don't count the last two years because of the pandemic. So <laughs> I think I've them. 42. <laughs> It's weird because I always remember you being like this young 20 something. So, yeah, mm. I keep forgetting. Obviously, I've aged, you age. Time happens. No. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Yeah, I know. We all get old. Yeah. <laughs> and grey. Yeah. Mm. Um, so, yeah. So, how was the whole coming out experience for you? Because, like, you know, I'm sure you know as much as anybody by now that coming out is a continual thing. Mm. You know, it's every day you meet something new who you get close to whatever you kind of like mm, do I tell them or not because you just don't know how they can respond and how has it been yeah. for you? I, um, I mean for the most part 
great. I, I never was really worried about my family. Um, it was more just I'm a Section 28 baby. So I didn't know what I was for many years uh, until I went to university. And even then, I went to a small university, so it wasn't really a thing there. Um, and then I moved around a bit, but I kind of moved with friends I'd had at university. So actually that became harder, even though they would have all been absolutely fine with it. Um, it would be, it was, it felt quite hard. And so actually it was moving to London and sort of moving to a whole new world, which is what I did when I'd done a few big finishes and I came over because I was really enjoying visiting London yeah. um, and was getting more big finish work. So it made more sense to sort of, not use all my holiday days on flying over for recordings um and yeah and then yeah no it was fine I uh, reached a stage where I felt comfortable in London had some very supportive friends as I think people do and you you then pass that on mm -hmm. um and then yeah and then yeah I decided that the next time I went home would be the time I tell my family whatever the reason was whatever reason I was going home for and then my granddad died <laughs> So um, I go to Yorkshire for my granddad's funeral, which is as bonkers as most funerals are, or certainly our families are. Um, uh, we had Thong Song playing on the car as we were driving into the crematorium, which you realised was probably... That's so very queer as folk, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, yeah, we had, the, we had the funeral, and then uh, we went back to my sister's. Mm -hmm. And we you know, did the whole, the whole Catholic uh, piss-up, wake um, thing. And... I waited till everybody else had gone and then it was just me and my sister and her husband and the husband went to the loo and I told my sister then and she said, yeah, you know, we, we thought you might be, didn't want to push it. Um, and because she did a bit to drink and I did a bit to drink, my niece gets up and she must have been, well, she's 20 now. So, yeah, she must have been about five or something. Um, she gets up because she can't sleep. She comes out and Jenny, my sister's like, Jade, Jade, Uncle Joe has just told us something. And I'm like, you don't need to tell the kids right now. <laughs> um, but then brilliantly, related to this, Jen went, um, you know how Captain Jack in Doctor Who likes kissing boys? Well, so does Uncle Joe. And Jade went, oh, and went to bed. Yeah. Um, and now it's a very different world. You know, it's next generation is, yeah, uh, is sure. much more comfortable with it. Um, so, yeah, no, it was, it was fine. And, I, yeah, I, you do have the, the constant thing of, do I feel comfortable being myself in mm. this particular situation? I remember, uh, you know, a friend of mine pointing out that I was doing the uncrossing my legs thing when sitting on the tube. And he oh, went, right. if you feel comfortable, sit cross, crossing your legs, cross your legs. Don't oh, let people so do it's it. all the perception stuff. Yeah, all the perception stuff was such mm. a big deal. Um, uh, but now, yeah, you know, it's 95% of the time it's fine. There's just 5% where you're like, just one of our own voices in this pub. But then that's my fault for choosing dodgy pubs. So yeah. <laughs> do you that get the um do you get the thing? I get this from not as much anymore, but I used to get it from certain members of my family of oh, this is Andy, this is so and so, whatever. He's gay. Do you get that? Or um that's always fun. Not so much. I mean my partners uh family are very comfortable with it and they do just and you know my my, my partner's um dad is a vicar and okay. he had a uh I can't remember what it was it's awful um he had a ceremony mm. at the church and we were sat in the front row it was part of the family and he hugged us as part of the family and everything like that um they have absolutely no qualms about going and this is Joey's boyfriend um and it's the same with my family you know it's we're very supportive families so you know we've been very lucky do you because i know of a lot of i mean certainly it's true for myself too and i imagine it's true for a lot of even today you know gay people or people who aren't sure they're gay do you look back and see like oh yeah i always knew but denial is a very powerful thing i think yeah i for many years didn't really know what I was as a teenager not in a questioning my sexuality I just didn't really know that gay existed right. you know um section 28 was quite the thing and we didn't watch EastEnders where there was a gay on EastEnders but we didn't watch it right. so it wasn't really a thing where we lived um 
and it's quite interesting. I kept a diary for one year of my life and I found it recently. And it's from when I was, I think it's 15 and 16. And um, I mentioned the word gain it once, which is talking about Freddie Mercury. Right. The rest of it is typical teenage stuff. And it, but there's a lot of, mm. um, I like this girl. Oh, I've split up with my girlfriend, but this girl, I, and, and we've agreed to be, you know, and it's that thing where you go, I absolutely would have known at the time. I was having nightmares about getting married and things like that. <laughs> and that uh, I have very old feelings about my German pen friend, um, <laughs> who was very, very lovely. Uh, but yeah, I lie, kept it, lied to myself about it, mm. um, you know, which is horrible. And, you know, I don't wish that on anyone. And you do look back and go, the long term, there are long term psychological effects of that um, because you don't get to live your normal teenage years. Is that, um, yeah. and I think you are constantly, whenever the spin the bottle being played or whenever anybody's got getting off with people or whatever, you're constantly just a bit like, oh, well, I'll just drink some more cider and be the funny one in the corner. <laughs> um, don't land that bottle on me because I don't want to be kissing no guy. No, no, no. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't want to kiss anyone. <laughs> Oh, I was going to say so now. You completely threw me off then. Uh, <laughs> that happens a lot in these things. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I did have, the, I did have a, a question then, but it's completely gone from my head. Something to do with... Do you find, because you said, like, the long-term effects of it, uh, do you find even today, in today's culture, where, and certainly in the UK, mostly people don't give a crap, really? Hmm mostly people don't care but do you find even in public you can still be a bit more reserved about things than you would normally be had you not repressed it so much when you were younger maybe I don't think it's about repressing it when I was younger I think it's more you know I have had homophobic abuse I've had it I had it a pride once I've I had it randomly in the street while going out to buy a packet of six um and uh, I don't even know how that guy knew. So I must have been particularly <laughs> flouting that day. Um, uh, you know, I've had, you know, trouble like that. And I think you are just aware that when you're in a non-gay bar, when you're in a Green King or Weatherspoons or an old man's pub or whatever, you do do a sort of quick glance around. Am I, am I safe to loudly mentioned being gay am I allowed you know am I allowed to flounce a bit am I allowed to kiss my boyfriend right. um you know yeah but I think it's it's quite a quick thing you do I think you, you very quickly go no but then I don't think anybody should really be kissing in public because who wants to see that, I like that too. I'm not, I'm... we all just keep it behind closed doors would be lovely yeah, I'm um, not much of a gay person myself, so I totally yeah. Like that, yeah. No, I mean, but it is just, you know, you do sit there, is that group of lads or, you know, that group of, you know, it's horrible, you know, horrible stereotypes, but is that group of football fans who've been drinking all day, are they going to kick off if they see us? And, and of course they're not, most times they're not going to. You don't yeah. have to worry about it, but um, you do think about it. But yeah, it's not. You know, it's, it's certainly better than it was. And I think that's always the right thing. You know, just to get moving in the right direction. That's, the that's, more... that's what I was going to ask. Do you think it will, as I say, get better? Do you think we'll actually ever, in the UK certainly, get to a point where people just really will not care anymore? I think we're already there. I think, yeah. I look at my nieces and nephews' generation, they really genuinely do not give a shit. Mm. Um, I, I, you know, I'm not saying they don't have to come out and it's quite interesting writing kids TV where you, you might be writing a gay character and you're going well I don't want to undermine the coming out journey because it's still a coming out story that still has yeah. to happen but at the same time I don't want to over dramatise it if it's not the big deal it was 25 years ago Right. Um, so I think, I think it's always heading in the right direction um, I can guarantee walking around this area of London, um, uh, majority of the time I'm perfectly fine. There might just be little areas where I might be a bit like, okay, don't, you know, but then those areas are probably not somewhere you'd want to hang out anyway. So yeah, no, I think yeah. it's heading in the right direction and I think it will head more in the right direction. You know, the more it's, you, you see representation, the more it's just normalized, the more, the more people can be out and, you know, just be themselves um then yeah no i think it's absolutely heading in the right direction do you as a writer 
I kind of feel this too sometimes. Uh, do you feel like there's, I suppose, more responsibility on us as gay men, women in writing to include more gay characters or lesbian characters, or just LGBT generally? Or do I you think you know, I, every writer? Yeah. I've, I suppose, always, well, I think one thing it does sort of almost subconsciously do is make me less interested in writing about um, heterosexual couples. Right. So if I look back at a lot of my writing, there's very few heterosexual couples. Oh, it's certainly not a big deal in it. Um, I have people who are friends. I have brothers and sisters. I have family units. I have things yeah. like that. Um, I think the one thing it possibly has made me is I'm just very aware of representation as a whole thing. So I will try and write... Um, will give a character a non-English name in an audio drama which means the director has to cast a non uh, a non-white actor um I certainly most things I write I would say are pretty much half and half men and women um with more of a tendency to write women just because you can write big camp fun women which is always more you know more more interesting than you know will they won't they Romeo and Juliet types um but yeah so I suppose I do do it but I think what I've done and I think how things have changed so much is um we were going to have Luke come out on the Sarah Jane adventures yeah, and that's the thing yeah. well I was going to say that was the thing me and Russell worked together we met at a vigil for a man who'd been killed at Trafalgar Square oh, and I said I wish there was something else we could do and Russell said then Russell messaged the next and I think we said something then about because I was writing Luke's leaving story then and I think yeah, we said something then about the other day actually hmm, yeah. so we said then and then I know Russell emailed the next day and went and it was the only time I think Russell's really written dialogue for me but he wrote that the, the four lines or whatever it was and said we can do it in his leaving scene as long as it's these lines we can't make a big deal out of it and I think where things have changed brilliantly over the last few years is certainly like in uh, yeah I will have a gay character, but it will literally just be a character saying, I'm going home to my boyfriend, or it'll be, this is my boyfriend, or it'll be, oh, I'm going out with some girlfriends or whatever. It, um, I don't feel the need to put coming out stories. Um, there's a series I produced at Big Finish called Dark Shadows, and we introduced a gay character, a gay teen, because we wanted to bring in some teenagers because it's a soap opera and blah, 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 blah. We wanted to reestablish it, so we brought in some new families and stuff like that. And even though it's set in 1980s America, mm -hmm. we also have a black sheriff. We also have, I mean, but we also have vampires okay. and werewolves. And go, so as far as I'm concerned, if you can cope with a werewolf, you can cope with a gay. Absolutely. Um, so what we did was we had a character. So the way we tucked it there was we didn't want to do a huge coming out story. Um, what we did was that every character had a secret mm. because it was a murder mystery. And that character's particular secret was what was he doing the night of the first murder and the night of the first murder it turns out he's having a cheeky little snog with a guy at the hotel um and so actually he comes out to his stepmom and she's fine with it but it's very much he says i've got something to tell you and she's like we know and then the guy he gets together with is already out and fine with it so we did a tiny little bit of a coming out story but that was more it wasn't him going this is 1980s america da, da, da. it was him going i'm just actually quite sensitive and i'm not as out there and confident as yeah. other people um so i think for me it's it's about just you, we don't have to do big coming out stories all the time mm. what we can do is just casual references yeah. to yeah, i find relationships because with the uh left with Stewart series which as i'm sure you know is primarily set in the 70s mm. um being me, obviously, I have to get a gay character in there because, you know, it's what I do. Um, so, similar to yourself, because it's set in the past, you have to play in a very different way. Mm. You still have to be aware of the era in which these characters exist. But at the same time, like you say, you don't want to make a big deal of it either because I think the more we normalise it, the more it will be seen as normal because it is normal. You know, the more, yeah. the more you draw attention to it in an extravagant, eccentric, loud way, then the less normal it is to people, mm -hmm. you know. Like, so I, this character of Owen, he was gay forever, but it's always little moments, nothing yeah. drawn attention to, like you're saying about your, your stuff. But 
the thing about Tommy is interesting, Tommy, Luke, is interesting, because I knew it's been quite well reported about he was going to come out eventually when he came back in ser- mm. like Series 5, I think it was going to be originally. But yeah. I didn't know you had a part in that. That's that's interesting. Well, we had... the Yeah, yeah, we were good. He was... Um, so a scene was recorded mm. for The Nightmare Man. So it's during his goodbye scene. We had... Uh, Sarah Jane say something like, you know, look after yourself, eat food, da, 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 da. and she went, and who knows, maybe, and you'll make lots of new friends, and who knows, maybe you'll get a girlfriend, and he says, or a boyfriend. Yeah, um, not recently. And he I said, she said, as long as it's not a Slovene, I don't care. Mm-hmm. And the idea was, we would do it, it was a casual coming out, and da, da, da. The problem is, and this is where things have changed, is actually having Sarah Jane Smith say, I don't care. Yeah came across as quite callous. It came across as actually your son has just come out to you um, or has is, is clearly in the process of, yeah. that he might be coming out to you and you've just gone, I don't care, get in the car, off you go. Um, but so George's not, intent would have been, it doesn't matter to her. That's what she's yeah, saying. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but at the time, matter. people might have misread it yeah. as, yeah. Yeah. I can see that. So I think when he comes back in series in the later episodes and he's on the um he's on whatever it is zoom skype yeah. um he does refer to sanjay a couple of times um and the idea would always be yeah that sanjay would be his boyfriend well and of course that was confirmed in that uh farewell say, sanjay. Was farewell sanjay? yeah that was confirmed in that when tommy got to say those lines so yeah it all came around lovely. that was good was, yeah, yeah, it was lovely, and it was just it was just the timing was a bit off. Yeah, um, and um, I think we could have done it if we did more room in the episode, and we hadn't thought about it at the last minute. Mm. Um, but it's just boring technical stuff. Like it was a very complicated story to do because Luke had to save the day, but you can't not have the others save the day. Luke had to announce he was going to university in one of the episodes, and, uh, yeah. and also it was writing out canine, so it was like you know it was a double whammy. Um, so yeah, afraid it. Yeah, but you know it happened to be. Well, speaking of um, things you didn't get to do then, because um, you have written a lot of stuff in the last, I'm going to say, 21 years. It's, yeah, 20 years. Because um, 2001. It just came up as the memory of, uh, so it's 20 years last month, I think, since The Rapture, my first really? big finish. Oh, I had that 2001. Yeah. Okay. You obviously know more than I. I started do. writing it in 2001, I suppose. Yeah. Okay, right, right, right. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah, I did. In my line of notes, yeah. Yeah, so I wrote it in 2001, or started writing it in 2001, but it got recorded in early 2002, I think. Right. So, um, is there anything you wish you could have done or wish you'd done differently in terms of writing? Uh, which, you know, obviously you've got I... a fair bit of whack behind you now. I don't really believe in thinking too much about what I should have done and more about what I should do and what I'm trying to do. Right. Um, I want to take a break um, from writing other people's stuff uh, for a bit and really concentrate on, I've written the beginning of a play, I want to write a full length play, so I've done a, lot, a few 10 minute plays and they've gone right. down well, but I want to write a full length play, I want to really work on an original TV show idea. Um, if I have one regret, it's that I wasn't very good at meetings when I started out. So I'd get sent to lots of production companies and they'd be like, well, what stories do you want to tell? And I'd be like, no, I just want to work on your shows because I didn't have a big ambition for telling my own stuff. I, I yeah. love writing, but actually I love it writing. I do love writing for other people. Now I've got older, there is part of me that is a bit like, actually, it would be really nice to be in charge of something, mm-hmm. um, to be doing well. Uh, I've got a mate, Alan, who... Um, I suppose I sort of discovered, I did a talk at his uni, we became pals, and now he writes for Hollyoaks a lot, and he, he does all the Dark Shadow stuff, and he's an absolutely amazing writer, and he's just had a full-length play out. So he's done a couple of full-length fringe stuff, but he's got one that he's now taking to various fringes, but also had it shown, it come, and it's brilliant, and it's so brilliant, and I'm so chuffed for him, but there's an element of me that's a bit like, I want that, I, I've, I'm really hungry for that now, for that, people come to a theatre and watch a Joseph Lindster play that is an hour long, not 10 minutes. Um, Cause that buzz of the theatre is just so good. It's 10 years since I wrote my first short play and it went down. I will never forget the audience reaction to it. Um, so yeah, that's, so it's not really a regret. It's more of a, 
I need to focus on, you know, what's happening moving forward. Yeah. Um, you want to do some new stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I get that because I'm at that stage where I've written a lot of other people's stuff, you know, franchise mm. stuff. And I'm at the stage of, again, where I've kind of like, I just want to do my own thing again. But it's yeah. tough, obviously, because when it's your own thing, you've got to create your market. Well, of course, with mm. a franchise, it's all there, piece of cake. Yeah. But that's what I'm kind of doing now. I've just started working my own novel today, finally. Ooh. Hopefully it'll work. Yeah. We'll find out. <laughs> um, which features uh, two gay leads and their adopted daughter. The first transgender character I've ever written, so that's going to be quite something. Ooh. Yeah. I've been talking to a few transgender friends of mine just to understand it better. Yeah, yeah, it's good. But I yeah. said, as I explained to one of them, my own experience as a gay man can help me to understand to a point because prejudice mm. is prejudice, you know, denial and all this stuff. It's all much so much, but they obviously have very specific things they go through that obviously I would never go through. Yeah. I wanted to make sure I got it in my head. Plus, of course, she's um, very much like, Today she's like, oh, it's so nice that Andy actually did a bit of research and spoke to real transgender people first. Listen up, Hollywood. Um, I goes, oh, the conversation's not over yet. Don't you worry, I've not finished conversing yeah. on these things because I don't want to get this wrong. No. I just no. say, no, representation is important. And if you're going to mm -hmm. dip your toe into something that's not your bag, then you really need to, you know, especially a steam of real yeah. people, you need to be very careful. So, yeah, I get that. Um, Right, we're nearing the end, I believe, because I know you've mm. got a time limit. I've got well. a deadline. <laughs> Talking deadline. of writing. You actually what, writing deadline or? Yeah, writing deadline. I'm doing a new kids TV show. All oh, right, um, so you're taking a break. To very exciting. For them? You're taking a break to talk to me out of your deadline. Yes, yeah, they're oh. great. Well, it's like, it's, I've okay. actually, uh, I mean, I've had a week to do it, but obviously we've just had the long bank holiday, so that, but even with that, I had a week. And, um, and as ever with me, it's, I did bits throughout the week, and then suddenly this morning I went, oh, that's how we solve pretty much every issue, by moving that one scene. So, yeah, it should be fine. That's good. It's always that one thing, isn't it? That yeah. little bit niggling, and then bam. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, wrapping up then, what advice, based on your own experience, would you give any advice, and what would it be to anybody struggling with their identity, be it sexual or gender orientated or whatever um based on your own experiences i think you know um the majority of people will be there for you the majority of people it won't change things um but you've got to be comfortable and you've got to be ready to do it when you when you want to do it um and you should be aware that there's a thing you will have to keep doing um but what you will find what i will say is like you know when i did start to really accept what I was. Um, I uh, genuinely thought, um, you know, I went through a whole period of thinking I will never, ever, ever come out. Mm -hmm. And it was this big secret I lived with constantly. And then once I did, and of course, 99% of people are fine with it, it, such a weight was lifted. You know, it can't be underestimated how big a deal, how big a change it can make to your life. Um, just for not always having that secret, not always having that thing that you're thinking must not let people know. Um, so yeah, no, um, I think just do it in your own time, but you know, be be aware that there'll be lots of people out there who are absolutely happy for you. Absolutely. Good advice. And so I think, yeah, absolutely. Majority of people, in my experience, most people didn't care. And those who yeah. are bothered, well, they don't matter. Really, mm, exactly. yeah. if, they, if they're that bothered, then they probably didn't care that much about you anyway. So, yeah, cool. All right, man. Well, I'm going to wrap it up here. Cool. Thank you for your time, Joe, especially since you've got no worries. Time. Um, and to all you guys watching this, I've been Andy, he's been Joe. Until next time, later. <laughs>